halftime. Lascano is deep. So is Thomas, and straight away. Fertilizer, for all you do, this Bud's for you. Well, our game almost got over before the other one that you've been watching got over, and ours started two hours later. But we do have quite an exciting baseball game going on here between the San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. Our game is all tied up 3-3, and the man at whom you're looking right now is Jim Otten, and he has just come on in relief of Sykes, the starting left-hander who went for the St. Louis Cardinals a total of five and two-thirds innings. The Giants of San Francisco would be leading had it not been for a sensational play just a few minutes ago. With pinch hitter Joe Strain at the plate, he dumps the ball out into right field, and with Johnny LaMaster running from second base, watch this play from George Hendrick, the right fielder. To Ted Simmons, the catcher, out at the plate, and Wes Parker, you can't open a telecast with a better play than that one. The throw came in all the way in the air, and everyone knows that George Hendrick has just enormous ability. It's a question of whether he's going to use it or not. He used it right there. He could not afford to have the ball bounce on him because it would have taken too much off the throw. So he let it go all the way in the air, and Simmons did an outstanding job blocking the runner, LeMaster coming in there at the plate. That was by far the best play of the ball game. The Giants jumped off to a 3-0 lead in the second inning when they wired four base hits and a walk together to get three runs. But the Giants came back in their half. Or the Giants get three in the first inning, and the Cardinals came back with three in the second inning. The Giants got their three on Larry Herndon's first inning homer. Now Otten is pitching to Joe Patini, and he gets a strike over. There are two down runners at first and second base. Runner at second is Joe Strain. The runner at first is Bill North. Giants three, Cardinals three. Hargesheimer started for the Giants, and he was taken out for a pinch hitter in this inning. Well, we coming on here sort of in the middle of a night, it appears. And as we look at this picture of the Cardinals, he has not won a game this year. He's 0-4 with a 7.85 earned run average. Low. It's been a strange game, Monty, because it started out like it was going to be a real slugfest. The Giants got three runs in the bottom half of the first inning on a home run by Larry Herndon with two on. Then the Cardinals came right back. Their first five hitters in the second inning all got on base. They scored three to tie, and that's been it. No runs since then. There's a drive in the center field. It may fall. It does for base hit. Let's see if this guy can throw from center field. They got him at the plate. He never reached home plate. Simmons jams the shoulder of Strain as he blocks him away from the plate. And the Cardinals get a man thrown out at the plate by Scott, a man thrown out by Hendrick, and the Giants have got to be frustrated. Strain is hurt. Let's watch it again. Well, you got to really go a long way before you can see two guys get thrown out at home in the same inning, both the same type of play. Look at Simmons block him off. It looked like in both cases the runner would score, but Ted Simmons in each instance just block him off from the plate now coming in head first sliding into the catcher like that you can really hurt yourself he might have dislocated that shoulder money i've seen it happen yeah i tell you they learn in baseball early ordinarily that you don't slide against a catcher on a close play at the plate head first you have no protection on those shoulders and a catcher's got that shin guard on and here's a man you're going to look at the play again watch ted simmons he knows how to block a plate well, the runner might see a little daylight to the outside, or in this case, to the inside, so he tries to get around him. Now, Simmons just moves right into him, blocks him right off with that shin guard, right knee. And Joe rolls over, and he is in pain. So we still have a tie ball game. The Giants failed twice to score on base hits to the outfield here in the inning. With the score tied 3-3 after six innings of play, let's pause for this word. You're watching Thursday Night Major League Baseball. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Monty Moore, and working with us as usual is Wes Parker, former Dodger great, and now our broadcast partner every week. Well, Wes, we've been sitting here in cold, cold candlestick. I know there are people around the country saying, cold, how can it be cold anywhere? Well, it's plenty cold here, but we saw some hot action that last inning. I really can't recall the last time I've seen two runners in a row thrown out at home plate on base hits where I thought they should have scored because neither ball was hit hard. And, and Simmons, you really have to give a lot of credit to him. He had that plate block 
in both instances. And the thing that you have to realize is that in order for a catcher to get that kind of a block on a plate, he's got to get a ball he can handle from the outfield. And Hendrick threw his all the way on the fly, and Scott threw it on one straight hop. And it was just two great throws. Wes, you've played a lot of baseball in this ballpark, and you and I are going to be talking about it a little bit. We've already seen two pop fly balls drop tonight, one by the first baseman, one by the catcher. The winds are just treacherous here. It's very, very difficult. Even though you think you've got the wind figured out, uh, it'll swirl on you, and, and you, sometimes you forget about it or you overreact to a ball and try to be too careful or too cautious or whatever. Very, very difficult to play when the wind is blowing as it is right now. We're going to say the new pitcher for the San Francisco Giants now, that's Gary Lavelle. Al Hargesheimer, who had gone undefeated in his early starts with the Giants, he'd just been up with them, he's 2-0, and oh, started and pitched pretty well here tonight for six innings, gave up seven hits and three runs, walked two, struck out three, but here is one of the Dodger, or one of the Giant mainstays, and that is Gary Lavelle, a reliever who's won three and lost five, and here we go, and the first man he faces is a pinch hitter for the St. Louis Cardinals as we start off this inning. This is Keith Smith. Smith this year batting 231 and only 13 at bats. The Cardinals under the management of Whitey Herzog now, and the Giants under the management of a guy who has really done a very fine job, Dave Bristol, wherever he's gone. He's had a very tough year this year, believe me. Tonight, for instance, the Giants had a lineup made up with Mike Ivey at first base. He's the guy who had quit in the middle of the season, and there's a line shot in the center field, a base hit for Smith. To give you the kind of an idea of the kind of a year that Dave Bristol's had managing the Giants, they had Mike Ivey to start the season, and all of a sudden he got very disenchanted with baseball and the people in it, apparently, and just left and went back home. Well, Willie McCovey retired just a few days later, and Willie personally went on the phone and Working out of the Giants front office, talked Ivy into coming back. He's been playing some for the Giants, but tonight he was in the lineup. And before the ball game, he just told him, I can't go out on the field. And nobody knows why. Here's the ball bunted and bunted foul by Tony Scott, the center fielder who's 0 for 3 tonight. So they had to change their whole lineup around. The Giants had Evans, their regular third baseman, is in at first now. Patini, who was going to be in a shortstop, had to move to third, and Lamastri, who was on the bench, moved to short. Kind of incredible what's been going on there at first base. You know, when Willie McCovey announced his retirement, he said part of the reason was because of a fellow named Rich Murray, a good-looking rookie. Well, now he's hurting out for the season. Gary Lavelle throwing that baseball hard. Tony Scott is up there. We are a tie game in the seventh inning. A sacrifice bunt type situation if you ever saw one. And Whitey Herzog plays that way. And here goes the bunt. And it's a beauty. Evans has got it. Over to Stennett, covering it first for the force play there. The sacrifice works, and now the Cardinals are going to have a couple of shots at driving in the go-ahead run. Well, you were talking about Mike Ivey, who's really a very sensitive young man and, and an excellent ball player, and, and he, I don't think he knows right now whether he wants to take advantage of his talent and continue playing or whether, out of his sensitivity, he just wants to retire and spend more time with his family. Uh, a lot of players go through that, and right now I think he's just in that in between stage where he's not sure what he wants to do. Well, it's really been uh, a, a, an unbelievable career that he's had. Uh, he was with the San Diego Padres, one of the highest regarded young players in all of baseball, and they wanted to make a catcher out of him, and he just said he wouldn't want to be a catcher. That's all. That's right. He was the number one draft in 1970 in the country, not just for San Diego. And he's hit a lot of home runs, and has hit some big home runs here in San Francisco, and it appeared he had found a place to play, but I think you have to travel the major league circuit to understand some of the things that these guys go through. Though that's certainly a drastic step just to pull a plug and say so long. Strike call from Lavelle to Ken Oberkfell. Oberkfell grounded out twice and walked once tonight. The Cardinals have eight hits and the Giants have five. Popped up on the infield. The master calls for it near second base. He's got it. The fans are on LaMaster a little bit here. He was one of the runners thrown out at the plate a little while ago. But I don't know what might be the reason they're on him, but fans here in San Francisco are on him a little bit. Monty, I know what it is. I've been up here for a couple of days, and apparently the people around here feel that he's been making too many errors out there at shortstop and, and just has not been playing the kind of ball that they were hoping he would. Of course, Roger Metzger, who he platooned with last year, had that accident 
over the winter a saw taking the tips of four fingers off his throwing hand so he hasn't been able to play Metzger has only batted 24 times all year so it's all fallen on Lamaster's shoulders first pitch it outside of all we have two down runner at second here's Leon Durham one of the fine young players in baseball today it's a bouncer to the third baseman and Patini throws him out no runs ahead and a man left for the Cardinals in the seventh inning and the score remains all tied at 3-3. We'll be back in 90 seconds after this word from your local station. Had things in gear pretty well uh, up until about a week ago when in a game against the Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, Gary Templeton, their leading hitter and probably their hottest hitter at the time, dove into first base and fractured his, his right thumb. And he, or, he is unable to play now. He is going to be out for about a month. Gary Templeton, who was leading the National League in hitting, still is. And... Undoubtedly will still have a chance to win the batting title when he comes off the disabled list in about a month. But that was a tremendous blow to this ball club. The Cardinals were just starting to get some momentum. Uh, Keith Hernandez is also not playing tonight, not because of an injury, but simply because he's he has felt that he has gotten somewhat tired because of the intense heat in St. Louis where the club just finished a homestand. So he's getting a night off. But St. Louis with an excellent hitting ball club, they've got eight hits tonight, but only three of those runners have been able to be cashed in. We'll have to see what happens, though. They're going to really miss Templeton, I think. Well, there's another player who's one of the really uh, exciting players to watch in Major League Baseball who's on the disabled list for the Cardinals. That's Bobby Bonds, who made his greatest um, appearances in the big leagues right here in this ballpark for the Giants and just finally uh, was run away from town. But the Cardinals have some really great players. We have a new pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals now. This is John Urea. He comes in in the seventh inning with the game tied at three and three. And first man he'll be facing will be Ted Simmons, the cleanup hitter for the St. Louis Cardinals. And you're looking at Urea right there. 6'3", 205 pounder out of Los Angeles. He's a big, strong kid. He's been in the big league since 1977, so this is his fourth year with the Cardinals. Came into this season 11 and 15 lifetime with a 407 ERA. The Cardinals have been hurting for good relief pitching all season long. They've brought up a couple of rookies from the minor leagues who have helped them somewhat. Littlefield has been outstanding for them, and Ken Seaman, who did do a fairly good job, has been sent back to the minor leagues. So they're looking for somebody who will be their stopper. All right, here's Jack Clark. He's walked three straight times tonight for the San Francisco Giants. He just missed a home run. Now, a little earlier this evening, when he ripped one around the foul pole on the wrong side here at Candlestick Park. The temperature right about now is probably 55 degrees. That's about the norm for this park at night. I know people in uh, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri listening in probably saying, how could it be that cool anywhere? Clark bounces one deep in a hole. They won't get him here, I don't think. It was a fine try. But Phillips couldn't get it there. Jack Clark, a great hustler, gets an infield hit to start the seventh inning. You know, this crowd has been very responsive. I've been impressed with the way they've been yelling tonight, uh, Monty, but the Giants have been playing some good ball since the All-Star break. You just see here the shortstop's foot slides out from under him. You'd have to have a gun to throw him out when you go that far in the hole. And that's the kind of a play you would expect from a Gary Templeton. We had been told prior to the game by Whitey Herzog, and he hadn't been with the Cardinals all that long, but he said that of all the players he's been around in the big leagues, he's been around some great ones. He said he's never seen a shortstop with an arm like Templeton nor with a range of Templeton. Here's Larry Herndon hit a three-run homer in the first inning. The Giants have not scored since. We're tied at 3-3. Boy, how about that first game tonight? Milwaukee and the Yankees. Jackson tied it in the ninth inning with a three-run homer. Yankees won it eventually in 11. And if you didn't see all that one, want to see some more of it, or if you saw it and want to see it again, it'll be on. USA Network immediately following our game tonight. Monty, I'm continually astounded at the ability of Reggie Jackson to hit in the clutch. I really believe he's the finest clutch hitter I've ever seen. Herndon after a breaking ball missing. Well, he's certainly proven that. Only fellow I can think of who uh, uh, even comes to mind as being in that category uh, of greatness that I think Jackson is in would be Yogi Berra, perhaps. I was around Reggie a whole lot. Of course, heard a lot about Yogi. Didn't see him play all that much, so I did see a few of his last 
few years. Herndon pops that ball up. It may come back. They've been coming back all night with a wind, but this one's going to stay in there. Talking about how the Giants have improved, they just got off to a horrendous start. They were 6 and 14 in the month of April. Since then, they're 43 and 37, six games over 500. So they really have shown some improvement, especially since about the time of the All Star break when they went into Los Angeles and took a couple of games for the Dodgers. But they've started to get a little bit of momentum going, and the fans are getting behind them a little bit more. Their attendance is way down about 240,000 this year in San Francisco. And that's a lot. You translate that into $5 a ticket or so, and you can see how much money they're down. Plus, put all the hot dogs and things like that 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 240,000 people would have bought. Nobody down. Herndon hits the ball in the air to left field. Orge drifts a little bit with the wind and makes the catch, and there's one out. Seventh inning, tie game 3-3. Monty Moore along with Wes Parker. Nice to have you with us tonight for our USA doubleheader Major League Baseball. Next Thursday night, we'll have two American League games that ought to be dandies. Have the Kansas City Royals. Now, wait a minute. Let me double-check that. I know we have Wes and I will be doing the California Angels. Got to look at my schedule. Shouldn't have brought this up right now, should I? I had it in my hand a minute ago. <laughs> Where is our producer when we need him? There's a strike. He's looking for his too. He had it in his hand a minute ago. Well, we'll make a we'll make a big climactic thing out of it. <laughs> Milwaukee at Boston. That's the first game next week and there's a drive to left field base hit for Darrell Evans. That's going into the corner. Clark's going to stop at third base. Now there's some big league hitting right there. Evans went right with a pitch. The second hit for Evans in the game. I've always been surprised by the fact that Darrell Evans has never hit for a higher average. He's about a 250 hitter lifetime. But he sprays the ball all over. He's really a good hitter. He got a good stroke and comes up with a clutch hit here. But, Monty, if you had asked me before I looked it up what his lifetime average was, I would have thought about 270. It's not. It's actually under 250. Well, oh, that's true. He's had some really good streaks in his career. And here's Rennie Stennett. He's 0 for 3. Let's see if they're going to pitch to him or walk him here. Johnny LeMaster scheduled a bat. Master on deck. I, if I was the manager, I think I would walk Stennett. And force him into some kind of a move here. One down. The infield is in. Off the stretch. Urea throws a slider and misses with it. Ball one. Stennett, you might remember the only baseball player in modern history to go seven for seven in a nine inning ball game. He did that in Chicago about four years ago. That's his one left side. It kicks off foul. After this batter we'll let you know for sure what we're going to be doing next next Thursday night. We know now. <laughs> Clark at third, Evans at second. Stanton takes a fastball and knocks him off the plate. This guy looks a little bit like Mike uh, Therese, the Boston Red Sox, who pitched for the Cardinals for a long time. A little bit. Not as big, but in facial expressions, he really looks like him. Stanton just wants to hit one through that drawn-in infield somewhere. He waited on that breaking ball, sort of hung in there and fouled it away. He really hung in there. He was leaning back, <laughs> trying to get out of the way of it. Giants need to score right here, Monty. They've left five men on in the last two innings. If they left two more, that would be pretty discouraging. Next Thursday night, Milwaukee at Boston, and that's at 7.30 Eastern time, and Minnesota at California. I tell you, there could be some runs scored in that Milwaukee-Boston game. Fenway Park, 7.30 next Thursday night, USA's first game of the doubleheader. Tennant bangs one, fair ball! Down into the corner, that's going to be good for two runs. 
Kenny Reach, the third baseman of the Cardinals, might have gotten totally blocked off there. He didn't really make a big move for that ball. Maybe it was by him too soon. He did not react to the ball quickly. You're right about that. As to why, I'm not sure. Stennett hits it fairly hard. It's not a shot. But, oh, he was pretty far from the bag, it looks like, Money. And it was just barely fair, so he just hit it right where he wasn't. A clutch hit for Rene, Rene Stennett. And I go back to what I said before he even came up to the plate, Money. I think I would have walked him. There's a new way of shaking hands in the big leagues. The handshakes of Major League Baseball players. <laughs> you could do a history on it, on the progression of it. They're always thinking up new ways. Now here's Johnny LeMaster. He just swung right through a fastball. Well, you know, the baseball players don't have a chance to spike the ball like the football players. Remember <laughs> all those different ways they were spiking? Yeah. Who was the big tight end for one team that shook the football like it was dice and then rolled it out in the end zone? That's the one I like. The master trying to find his way on. He had reached the third baseman playing very deep. Had he have gotten that down, he might have had a hit right there. The master 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. The Cardinals saved the game for themselves in the sixth inning for a while anyway with two sensational throws from the outfield and very aggressive blocks of home plate by veteran catcher Ted Simmons. Ooh, breaking ball almost had him. There's a great message on the Giants message board right now. If we could get our camera to take a shot of it, and Wes will read it for you. Right. <laughs> what does that say, Wes? Well, before I read it, let me just study it for a few minutes, would you? <laughs> <laughs> for our Oriental viewers. <laughs> nice pattern. Man, he blew him right out of there. LeMaster down on strike. Urea throwing hard. Get a shot at LeMaster. He, he just threw his hands up to the fans, threw his bat away. Look at this. He is not happy. The fans have been all over him, and he is not very happy about it. Well, that's, that's not helping his own cause either when he's urging him on like that. Boy, I know his folks are walking down in Paintsville, Kentucky. That's about 100 miles from Lexington, and... Hang in there, folks. Give him a call tonight if you can. I'll bet he could use it. You bet. When your own home fans start booing you, when you know you've played well in your career here in a ballpark, you're walking Sadek. And we're going to have Lavelle batting next for the Giants. I mentioned that Sadik just came off the disabled list uh, tonight, Monty. He's in the game for the first time in three weeks to a month. And Milt May, who was the Giants catcher, has gotten hurt. Hurt about a week ago, and now he has gone onto the disabled list. So the Giants have really had their troubles with injuries, especially to their pitchers and catchers. Coming on is Gary Lavelle, who stands to win the game if he can hold him off for a couple of innings. Out in the uh, St. Louis Cardinal bullpen right now, a great salute to the geriatric set of baseball is warming up. Jim Cott, 40 year older. Well, it's popped up back here and out of play. The Giants with two runs here in the seventh inning. They've had three hits. Jack Clark started it. Evans and Stennett doubled. Stennett double knocked in two. Candlestick Park, for those of you who are not familiar with this ballpark, is located right on San Francisco Bay. Right around the point. Oh, candlestick point, and it can be cold, cold, cold here. That fog off the ocean. Well, LaBelle doesn't make his living hitting, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad looking swings right there. 
Well, that's it. The Giants get a couple, and that's all he's concerned about, really. They had three hits, and they left a couple of guys on base. So after seven innings of play with the score, the Giants five and the Cardinals three. Let's pause for this word. You're watching Thursday night Major League Baseball. Have lots of great sports for you on the USA Network, and coming up right away is more terrific soccer action. It's going to be next week on the USA Network's exclusive Wednesday night North American Soccer League series starting at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. We'll be in Florida for an exciting meeting between the California Surf and the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Boy, I love the names of those soccer teams. You ever notice those? The Surf and the Strikers. Each of these teams leads its respective division, so that matchup shapes up to be one of the year's best. Be sure to catch it all right here on most of these same cable systems on the USA Network. That is Wednesday night, starting at 8 o'clock. Well, we're all set to go here in the top half of the eighth inning. Ordinarily, Mr. Parker would be doing a couple of innings about the sixth and seventh or something like that, or the fifth, I don't know what, but tonight he is not going to work until the eighth inning because Jim Woods decided to work a little longer tonight. But however, you'll be glad you waited. Here's Wes. Okay, I got a little promotion up to the eighth inning, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, Gary Lavelle with a two-run lead will pitch to the four, five, and six hitters in the Cardinal order, Ted Simmons, George Hendrick, and Dane Orge. Simmons has hit the ball hard three times. He's two for three. And he hits a shot up the middle right here. That's four times tonight he has hit the ball on the nose. Twice left-handed, twice right-handed. Simmons came into the game hitting 300, so he'll move up. Boy, he is just a plain good hitter. There's no getting around it. Wes, I've not seen him play all that much, having spent most of the time in the American League. And really, in, since we've been doing the national telecast, not seeing the Cardinals that much. But I tell you, every time I've seen them, he's done something good. And I like blocking the plate tonight a couple of times. Like you say, he's hit four shots tonight with that bat. He must be a great everyday player. Monty, he is. He is an outstanding ball player. He's in his 11th big league season. In 10 of those, he has hit over 300. And if he does it this year, it'll be six out of 11. Now, here's George Hendrick. Hendrick has two singles and has flied out to center. He has driven in a run. As, as you remember, he is battling with Steve Garvey of the Dodgers for the RBI lead in the National League. He's about three or four behind him, but he's picked up one tonight. The Dodgers are idle. Fly ball to right center. Might be trouble. Long way to go. It drops for a base hit. Simmons around second. He'll try to score as he comes around third. Hit. No, they hold him up. And Hendrick holds up at second. Simmons had a shot at scoring. He held up a little bit to see if the ball would be caught. And the Cardinals down by two do not take the chance. Right. Hendrick fought off that fastball and just drove it up the alley in right center. They just don't quit coming back. These Cardinals swing the bat. Hendrick hits another rope. And a very fine play by Clark. He got it on one hop, and there's Simmons turning towards third. But the third base coach, Kroll, throws up the stop sign, and Ted, who had made the turn, goes back into third. With nobody down. They didn't want to gamble right there. I think that's what it was, because if he had gone, I believe he would have scored. Well, George Hendrick has three hits tonight. So does Simmons. Tell you that Hendrick, Hendrick could win the uh, National League batting championship in addition to the RBIs. Well, both of them are actually fighting for that. In fact, uh, you could make a case for Hendrick uh, going for the Triple Crown. Tell you, he's quite a player, and I saw him play in his early years, his formative years at 18 years old, just out of Los Angeles. Was quite a fine bonus player in the Oakland A's organization and been traded around a little bit. And really, people in different ball clubs didn't like him because a lot of people felt he wasn't hustling all the time when he really did things so easily that he was getting there but just not looking good doing it. Well, and on the always, other hand, there are other guys that look like they're hustling all the time. They're not getting anywhere. That's always been a wrap on him. Everyone is, everywhere he's gone, they've talked about what great ability he has. I'm going to have a change. That's uh, Dave Bristol, and he went to the umpire first, so they're going to bring in Greg Minton out of the bullpen to pitch to Dave they uh, got a Dane pinch, Orge. They've got a pinch hitter up yep. there. It's going to be Terry Landrum, who they just brought up from the AAA ball club. He came up about a week ago, Monty and has done one fine job. Uh, the Cardinals opened this road trip in San Diego, and in his first start in the major leagues, this fellow Landrum went four for five. Game's well, not that easy, kid. <laughs> As he's found out, I'm sure, since then. Well, the Cardinals, uh, the last few years, have started to get like the Pittsburgh Pirates. They just seem to breed good hitters. Lavelle well, pitches one inning, gives up three hits. Didn't walk anybody or strike anybody out. And those are the tying runners sitting out there at second and third, with nobody down. And we're going to be seeing lots of moves by these managers. So even though you joined us late tonight, you're going to have plenty of baseball to see watching this one because it's just one of those games, and it has been from the very first when you've got to figure that 
it's going to be a wild, wild thing to end up. Minton has really done a good job for the Giants this year in 43 games, and that means he's been in more than any other Giant pitcher. He's got an earned run average of 2.65 with a 3-1 and 3-loss record. So that's the story on Greg Minton. He's got a few more warm-ups with a score of 5-3, the Giants. Let's pause for this word. You're watching Thursday Night Major League Baseball on the USA Network. Lavelle. Lavelle relieving Al Hargesheimer, who started this ball game. Rookie brought up from the Phoenix Triple H Club of the Giants. Kennedy, a big, strong kid. Swings late here against Minton. Kennedy is the son of Bob Kennedy, who's the general manager of the Chicago Cubs. And he is 6'4", 220 pounds. The number one draft choice of the Cardinals back in 1977 out of Mesa, Arizona. Sorry to say, uh, Wes, I saw him play high school baseball when uh, he was in Mesa, Arizona, and his father was managing the, o the uh, Oakland A's for his one year. They trained right there in his hometown. Boy, he's way behind Minton. Minton is really throwing hard. Some because Minton is really more or less a sinker ball pitcher, but right now he is just smoking the ball. You don't often see a pitcher and a hitter both in the game uh, facing each other for the first time, you know. Both just walking in. Yes. Just blew him away. Three fastballs. So a new pitcher against a new hitter, and the pitcher wins. Ken Kennedy strikes out. Kenny Reitz will now be the hitter. Now watch Kennedy here as we uh, replay this. He never really gets around on this ball. That's how quick Minton is. Look at that. Kind right. of a feeble swing for a left-handed pinch hitter. Took three real uh, late cuts behind the pitch. You've got to be ready coming off that bench. Runner still at second and third, but the infield is now back. They'll concede a run to get an out. Reitz, fouls this one back. Kenny Reitz, who grew up one mile from Candlestick Park where this game is being played. Said he used to walk over and watch the Giants play. Now here he is right in his own backyard. He was traded to the Giants for one year from the Cardinals and was retrieved by St. Louis as they made a trade to get him back. Unique deal. Uh, Wes, he never really got going here. He's a Gold Glove Award winning third baseman in St. Louis and never even really feel it all that well here in uh, San Francisco. He just never got comfortable here. Usually a quick starter. He started very fast this year, was leading the league in hitting. Fouls this one at the plate. Up until I would say about a month, maybe a month and a half ago, uh, Monty he was leading the National League in hitting, but he's a notorious quick starter and slow finisher. He has dropped down to 273. That's quite a fall for him because for a while he was hitting about 340, 350. West, in the early parts of the season, you and I would be talking between innings sometimes about the top hitters in the National League, and out of the first nine, one week, five were Cardinal players. That's right. And they were in last place, which really seemed incongruous. Well, they've had a lot of troubles with their pitching, especially in the bullpen. Some of their starters got hurt, too. Men with the count, no balls, two strikes. Line foul down the line. Brizzi out in front of a hanging curveball. The Cardinals trying to get back in the ball game. It was tied up 3-3. The Giants scored two in the bottom of the seventh. And Simmons singled, Hendrick doubled to put runners at second and third with nobody out. Kennedy, the pinch hitter, struck out, and now here's Kenny Reitz. Fastball chopped up the middle. Simmons will score. Lamaster throws out Reitz, so it's 5-4. Hendrick moved over to third on the play, so with two outs, he is hoping somebody will get him home. Hey, Reitz didn't have a very good cut at that ball. <laughs> he was kind of backing away. And just got enough wood on it to bounce it out over the pitcher's mound. Looked like a breaking ball that went down and away from him, and he just was just really trying to make contact with a runner at third in the infield back. You, you know you can get that man in by just hitting the ball somewhere. Here's Mike Phillips. Phillips playing shortstop in place of the injured Gary Templeton. And tonight he has two hits. He singled his first two times up. Popped out to left field. So he was two for three. Cardinals with ten hits so far in this game. Boy, their averages just keep staying right up there, don't they? They as a team are leading the National League in hitting. 
They've been hitting close to 280 almost the entire season. One ball, no strikes. Good sinker foul back, one and one. A good example of some relief pitchers just feel more comfortable throwing off a stretch position. Here they are with two down and a runner at third base. And Minton could be going to wind up easily here, but he's sticking with the stretch position. That is interesting, and Hendrick is really not a threat to steal home. Not too many guys are. They don't try it too much anymore, but, but Hendrick would be very unlikely to even attempt it, yet he's going from the stretch. Two balls, one strike. And over on the other side of uh, San Francisco Bay at the Oakland Coliseum, they got a lot of guys trying to steal home this year. They've done it about nine times already under Billy Martin for you the know, Oakland A's. They're an amazing ball club, those A's, in second place now. That side for ball three. The pitcher is due to hit next, but I'm almost positive we would have a pinch hitter. Three balls, one strike, two outs here in the top of the eighth inning with the Giants leading 5-4. Phillips the hitter. Chops one down to first. That's Darrell Evans. He'll feed the pitcher. And to get out of the inning, that's a nice job by Minton, who came in with nobody out and runners at second and third. He allows just one run to the Cardinals, leaves one. And at the end of seven and a half innings now, it is the Giants leading the Cardinals by a score of 5-4. We'll be back now in 90 seconds after this word from your local stations. In the last half of the first inning, the Giants against uh, Bob Sykes, who had started for St. Louis. Sykes came in with a record of four wins and eight losses. He walked the leadoff man in the first inning. It was Billy North, but they forced him at second base when Joe Patini hit into a force out. Then Jack Clark got a walk, and with two men on base, Larry Herndon hit his seventh home run of the year. It represented the most home runs he's ever hit in one season with the San Francisco Giants and that got the Giants a three nothing lead. It was very short lived. Hargesheimer Al Hargesheimer who had not lost a game in two starts for the Giants after coming up to the minor leagues gave up a leadoff double to Ted Simmons a single to George Henry to drive in a run. Then Dave Orge or Dane Orge walked to uh, put two men on and Kenny Reach got a base hit to drive in another run and right behind him Mike Phillips and got a base hit and the Cardinals had three runs and tied the ball game and it stayed that way until the seventh inning then you joined us so you have pretty much seen the highlights of the ball game in the one inning you got here just in time to see two sensational throws from the outfield which have been easily the highlights defensively of the game Johnny LeMaster thrown out at home and then right behind him uh, Mike uh, or uh, Al Strain thrown out at home. Bottom of the eighth inning at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Wes Parker along with Monty Moore bringing you the play-by-play. -play. And the Giants lead it 5-4. to four. Billy North, the leadoff hitter for the Giants, will start things off here. Billy, a good, experienced ball player coming over from the Oakland A's. Played for a while with the Los Angeles Dodgers. In this ball game, he is one for two. He is lined out to left field. Walked, singled, and walked again. So he's been on base three out of his four times at the plate. Wes, he's one of the best leadoff men I've seen in Major League Baseball. He's one of the uh, very few people in modern Major League Baseball who will look for a walk. He was telling me before the game tonight, as a matter of fact, he said, I'm not hitting much, but look at my walks. He said, I'm proud of those. You know, you're right. Not too many players think about that anymore, but especially a leadoff hitter should be very, very aware of his on-base average, and those walks sure help. Oh man, you got some little guys like Campanaris and Patek and those guys. You just can't walk those guys for some reason. But here's a Billy North. Now he knows that's as important as anything. Three balls, one strike to Billy North. See if he takes this one. Is that on it? Yep, he did. That's his second walk, his third walk in this game tonight. So he's on, and he's such a great base runner. He is the leading base burglar for the Giants and the greatest in their history, as a matter of fact. He's got 33 this year, has been caught only 12 times. He's always had over 50 for the Giants. 33 out of 45, so he's right around a 75% mark as a stolen base man. This is Joe Patini. Patini playing third base tonight, as Monty already mentioned, he was scheduled to play shortstop, but when Mike Ivey couldn't make it, they switched it around, moved Darrell Evans from third to first, Patini to third, and brought in LaMaster to play short. Now the Giants will try to nurse him around, Patini undoubtedly with the sacrifice bunt. 
He's been safe on a fielder's choice, struck out, sacrificed already, and singled. Nice bunt down to Durham, the first baseman, playing in place of Hernandez, and he throws it by the second baseman, and the runners will wind up at second and third. It looked like a good enough throw, but for some reason, Obergfell could not handle it. I don't know who's going to get the error. We'll just wait and see. I thought it was a good enough throw to catch. I did, too, Wes. I don't know what happened. I, I tell you, Obergfell's had a tough night everywhere in the field tonight. Now, watch this throw. It might have been a little bit low here. I don't know what happened to that Boy, I, I don't either. I right there. I still think it's, an, and it is, ruled an error on the second baseman. That's the way I would have done it. But the Giants have a golden opportunity to add to their lead. Jack Clark will get an intentional walk. Four times he's walked tonight, Wes. This guy, well, this is a total now of 10 walks Giant batters have received from Cardinal pitchers. Jack Clark walked his first three times up, then singled, and now is getting his fourth walk. Boy, that's something. He's the one guy the Giants have. You look at their lineup. He's the one guy they have that might hit the ball out of the ballpark. They don't have anybody else that you could call Thunder. Of course, this is the kind of situation right here uh, that you would expect anyway. That left-hander Jim Cott wearing his old number 36. He's worn that through two leagues. And John Littlefield, the right-hander, number 50. Now here's an old teammate of mine, Claude Osteen. You remember he pitched for the Dodgers after coming over from Washington. He is now the pitching coach for the Cardinals. He's going to go out there and have a little chat with his pitcher here, James Otten. This is Otten's first year in the major leagues, or at least in the National League. He played for the White Sox back in 74, 75, and 6. This is Urea. You're right. I'm... I'm thinking of a previous pitcher. This is Urea. Otten came and left in a hurry. Boy, they've been doing that tonight, the last few innings anyway. So Osteen talking to Urea. Now the stage is set for Larry Herndon. He could be really a hero tonight. He's already driven in three of the Giants' runs. And the jackpot is loaded again. Herndon with a three-run home run back in the first inning after a couple of walks, one to North and one to Clark, as we already mentioned. After that, he was safe on a fielder's choice, safe on an air, and flight out to left. He is one for four. Line drive to right field. Base hit. Hendrick fires it in. One run will score. The other runners were hold. The bases will remain loaded. The Giants lead six to four. Boy, I want to tell you something. George Hendrick made an unbelievable play, and it's hard for me to believe the runner from second didn't score. This ball is right down the line, and Hendrick actually feels the ball in a hop going away. And you tell me a guy couldn't score from second. One, two, three, four, five, six steps he took before he threw the ball. But with nobody down, the Giants figure they still got three outs left, so they're not going to take any more chances. And Whitey Herzog's not going to take any more from Urea. He's going to go to the veteran left-hander, Jim Cott. Well, I totally agree with you. I can't believe the runner didn't score from second. That was Joe Patini out there, but we've seen a couple of other giant runners got thrown out at the plate tonight, so maybe it's a slow track, Money. I suppose, but you'd think a second base, uh, runner at second base could have seen that ball is going to get in there. Well, let's remind our fans of some tennis while we have a chance. You bet, and it's a big one, too. A $175,000 tournament coming up, the Volvo International Men's Tournament highlighted this week on the USA Network and Jimmy Connors is in that one along with Harold Solomon, Raul Ramirez and Eddie Dibbs. They're among those who are going to compete. The USA's coverage will begin Saturday, August 2nd at 8 o'clock Eastern time with semifinal action. It'll conclude Sunday, August 3rd also at 8 for the final round matchup. So let the USA Network take you to New Hampshire this weekend for some great tennis action available on most of these same cable systems. Well, here's a guy in Jim Cott who, and we talk often about great defensive players. While he was in the American League, he was reputedly, or without any question of a doubt, in the minds of those who voted anyway, the best fielding pitcher during his era in there. I think he won the Gold Glove Award as the top defensive pitcher, best defensive pitcher in the American League 10 or 11 times. I don't know, 16 consecutive times. Now, there were years, of course, that other pitchers in the league had fantastic records. I recall, for instance, Paul Lindblad set the all-time Major League record for most consecutive games pitched without making an error 
and it was way away past Jim Cott. And Cott made four or five errors that one year, and, didn't, and he still got the record. But once you get that kind of a reputation, you've got it. And this guy's been a good pitcher. He's taken care of himself. And the fact that he's out there 40 years old tells you something. He's actually 41. He'll be 42 on November 7th. Jim Cott, the fourth pitcher for the Cardinals in this ballgame, following Bob Sykes, Jim Otten, and Urea. Bases loaded, nobody out. There's a foul ball down the left field line. Darrell Evans, a hitter. Evans hitting fifth in the Giants lineup. He singled, grounded out to second, walked and doubled, so he is two for three. Scored a run. Just outside for a ball. Cott has won 20 games or more three times in his career. He did it once with Minnesota, then after being traded to the White Sox, he won 21 and 20 games in 74 and 5. Ground ball to the first baseman. He'll come to the plate. He'll go back to first and get the double play. Boy, Durham made a nice play throwing to Simmons, and Simmons fired it right back to him. That is a very difficult 3-2-3 three, three double play, and that'll help the Cardinals' chances as Cott comes in and really does a job. He's got one more to get, however. Durham got rid of the ball in a hurry, and Simmons doesn't even have time, really, to step inside and get a better throwing angle. He threw the ball right down the line, but the first baseman, Durham, got back over there and gave him a good inside target. Now, Whitey Herzog made one move, and he's out there again, and he's going to make another one right now. He's going to bring in the right-hander now. So Cott did his job. He's a man who can pitch to spot situations, and you can't ask for a man to do a better job than he did in that situation right there. He's going to make a double switch here, too, Monty. They put Mike Ramsey in at shortstop. And, of course, that's because of the top of the ninth inning. They'll want Ramsey to hit before the pitcher comes up. Uh, they got Littlefield. Well, so. Littlefield has been a real surprise for them, a very pleasant surprise. They brought up a lot of players this year from their AAA Farm Club Springfield. Littlefield played at Arizona State and Azusa Pacific Colleges. He was a second-team All-American. Very impressive minor league statistics. He was 35-22 and 22 in his minor league career with an ERA of under three, six of seven times in the various leagues that he played in. Conflicts with people in the front office, and then it becomes who's the most powerful. Now, you remember the last time Stennett was up, they did not walk him with first base open. He doubled to drive in two runs and put the Giants ahead. That was in the seventh. Now in the eighth with first base open, and again two runners in scoring position, they will walk him. And Johnny LeMaster is going to get a chance to listen to the crowd here again. In fact, the fans are already starting to boo, and they can see what's going to happen here also. Well, the master is hit into a fielder's choice. He is lined out to right field, walked, and struck out. So he is 0 for 3. Came into this game hitting 227. And you'll hear a real chorus of boos greeting Johnny LeMaster as he walks up to the plate. You really almost wonder what they've been booing about because LeMaster's just been doing the same job he's been doing ever since he's been up here with the Giants, but... This year, suddenly, they don't like it. The fouls went at the plate. There are two outs. The Giants have the bases loaded. They have scored once already here in the bottom of the eighth, and they lead St. Louis 6-4. to four. Line drive right at reach. So Littlefield gets out of this inning. He does a good job. The Giants, however, come up with a run. They leave three. And at the end of eight, eight complete now, it is San Francisco six, the Cardinals four. Let's pause now for this word. You are watching Thursday night Major League Baseball. If you like harness racing, $2 million will be at stake. That's right, $2 million Wednesday, August 6th as the nation's finest two-year-olds race in the Woodrow Wilson Pace at the New Jersey Meadowlands. USA Network will be on hand for complete coverage, including exclusive interviews and a trip to the winner's circle. The $2 million jackpot makes this the richest horse race in American history. Tune in Wednesday night, August 6th at 10 p.m. Eastern time for an evening of harness racing right here on most of these same cable systems. To the top of the ninth, and for more play-by-play, -play, here is Marty Moore. Okay, Wes, good job as usual. And here's Keith Hernandez pinch hitting for the St. Louis Cardinals, Ramsey. 
Cardinals are down by two runs. It's pretty good horse to be able to bring up off the uh, dugout steps. Speaking of horses and horse races, and speaking of a horse race, this guy was in one for the National League Most Valuable Player Award last year. He shared it with Willie Stargell. First time in 49 years of the award that two men have shared the Most Valuable Player Award in the National League. He hit 344, drove in 105 runs last year. Had a super season, and uh, he's in his hometown out of San Francisco. His dad's out here tonight watching him play. Strokes that ball hard, but foul into the left field seat. Monty, he, uh, as I told you earlier, he's been a little bit tired lately, and uh, he was in a collision play with Bill Buckner, you remember, about a month ago, and suffered a slight concussion. He said ever since then, his legs have felt heavy. Hasn't been able to get that good feeling that he had right before that collision. Slashes another one foul. Boy, he'll use the whole diamond. He'll hit it from left field to right field all the way around. One of the people are filing out of Candlestick Park here tonight. 20,496 came out. Cold, cold weather, but nothing new for the people here. Miles off another one. He came off that bench swinging the bat. Griffin is the right-hander, and Holland the left-hander for the Giants. In case Minton needs help, he didn't appear to need any. He retired three in a row in the eighth inning and looked very powerful doing it. Keith Hernandez of the Cardinals. Boy, when they've got all their players in the lineup, they are tough. He's hitting 319 this year. He took a close one right there. Oh, oh, did he ever. Umpire's feet are not as cold as mine, or he'd been out right now. A real close pitch. Have a look at this. Good breaking ball. Ooh. Oh, I tell you. I, <laughs> Where that's, was that That's, that's got to be a strike. Boy, Herndon been wobbling a little out there, but he got it. If you give a guy like Hernandez four strikes, he's going to get some pretty good swings. I still can't believe he called that a ball. I've never seen a more perfect strike. <laughs> You're right. Here's Tony Scott. He's made a tremendous throw from the outfield tonight, but with the bat, he's done nothing. He's 0 for 3 with a sacrifice. Giants are leading 6 to 4. It's been a 19-hit attack tonight. 10 for the Cardinals, 9 for the Giants. Cardinals have made three errors. Scott misses, takes outside for ball one. Boy, the people are piling out of that upper deck right now. Must be something gathering out in center field. Must be a good place to exit or something out there. And all people are moving that way. Look at that shot coming right at you. At the shortstop. A two line drive out here in the ninth inning. And here's the Cardinal second baseman, Ken Obertfeld. He is 0 for 3 with a walk tonight. Earlier tonight, the New York Yankees beat the Milwaukee Brewers by one run, 7 to 6 in 11 innings. And you'll be able to see that game in its entirety following this one. If you stay up to the ninth inning to watch it, you'll see a very dramatic moment. Yankees were down by three. Pitch is low for a ball. You could tell that was going to be a tough play. And Patini didn't get him. That ball played him from the time it came off the bat. Patini just never could get in rhythm to get the bounce right. It's a tough play for him, a very tough play, Monty. The third baseman's in so close, it's hard for him to back up or give ground there. He just gets caught in between. He hoped the ball would bounce in front of him instead of kicked out to his left. Otherwise, he might have had him. You know, we've been talking about Kansas City, how well, how well they are playing. Do you know that Mitten came over to the Giants from Kansas City back in 1973 for Fran Healy in a trade? Yeah. Seems a long time, doesn't it? Fran Healy. Now a broadcaster with the Yankees off and on. Well, they're going to make a pitching change apparently right here. Boy, I don't know as I'd do that. Not the way Minton is throwing. But you're right, Bristol is. He's, he's just going to go with the percentages. Apparently, he's going to try and bring in a left-hander, will bring in a left-hander. 
to face the left-handed hitter Durham. Or Minton's looking darts through him too as he came out there. The way he's throwing it, you really wonder sometimes about this book that the managers always foul, follow with the left-hand pitcher against the left-hand hitter and vice versa. And here you have a fellow Minton who throws a good sinker ball. It'd be very hard for any kind of hitter to get the ball in the air off him and hit a home run. In fact, I don't believe that Minton has given up a home run in two years. And yet he is being lifted here. That's hard to believe. Retired yeah. five straight and got the ground ball. It could have been the last out of the game. And in fact, they ruled. We didn't gone. say it a moment ago because we didn't know, but they have now ruled it an error on the third baseman. And Minton tosses the ball over to Holland, and out he comes. Well, you can never really criticize a manager, Monty, because you, a lot of times you have the advantage of hindsight, too. But if a manager ever overmanaged, this might be a case of it right here. Might be a case of something we don't know about, that Durham has hit the ball hard off Minton in the past. Not being with the ball club every day, you just don't know what might be in the mind of Dave Bristol, but I got to figure he's more qualified to pick his people out there than I might be, that's for sure. But you can certainly see, Wes, what you're talking about as Minton was throwing the ball hard. He did throw two line drive outs here in this inning. Hernandez almost knocked the left fielder down, and Tony Scott almost dehorned the shortstop with line drives. Then Obergefell hit the bat hop bouncer out to Patini. So it's a six to four ball game. Other scores tonight. We mentioned the Yankees beat Milwaukee. Texas beat the Baltimore Orioles seven to four. Kansas City bombed Boston 13 to three. And Detroit bombed the California Angels 15 to six. The Angels have got to look like Berlin in <laughs> World War II, the way they've been bombed so much this year. Boy, their pitching staff has been demolished. They were doing pretty well. They had beaten Detroit uh, three straight games and were threatening to sweep that series. That's probably been the high point of the year, winning three in a row on the road. And then coming back down tonight, they did get home runs from uh, Carney Lansford and Don Baylor, the Angels did, and the Tigers from Kemp. Wilcox was the winner and I see the loser. I see five wins and 13 losses for the Angels this year. All right, here's Leon Durham. With the man on Durham carries a potential tying run of the game right here. Holland misses high and inside. How much work has Holland done this year for the Giants? Well, his record three and two is earned run average 1.15. He's pretty, been tough. Pretty good. Very good. Dave Durham had a good cut at a left handed yes, pitch right there. I bet he did. Fastball, it was up, and he had a heck of a rip. Doesn't look like Holland's a sinker ball pitcher, so he would certainly be more likely to give up a home run, I would think, than Minton would have been. Off that one off. That was up and in on the left hander. He did not want to swing. He was trying to check his swing there. If you've, if you've ever seen a guy set up for a curveball down and away, it's this one right here. <laughs> you got it. Here's a replay of the previous pitch. Durham just trying to check his swing. The ball sailed up on him, and he realized it was a ball, but could not hold up. Giant fans smelling the kill here now. They're only two games under 500. They win this one. They're just a game under 500. That's got to be a balk right there. And there the umpire signaling it. You're right. Holland had the ball in his hand and his foot on the pitching rubber and dropped it out of his hand. Well, that in itself will not hurt them even if that man scores. It's the hitter at the plate they're worried about with a two-run lead. And that hitter's at the plate right now. Now, this is you're going to see the back of the pitcher drop. Look at that. Dropped it right out of his hand. Whoop. And there's a pitch, swing, and a miss, strike three, got him. So Holland came out of there and made Dave Bristol look great. As he got the strikeout that ended the ball game and set off the victory fireworks here. As it announced it on the scoreboard, we win, and the Giants do indeed. At the end of the ball game with the final score, the Giants six, the Cardinals four. We'll have the wrap-up for you in just a moment.
And here's the line score for tonight's ball game for the winning San Francisco Giants. Six runs, nine hits, and one error. For the losing St. Louis Cardinals, four runs, ten hits. They made three errors. Actually, the Giants made two errors. It was another recorded later in the game. The winning pitcher was LaBelle. He's four and five, and the loser is Urea, three and one. Holland gets credit for a save. We'll be back to wrap up some other Major League scores for you in 90 seconds after this word from your local stations. Well, here, West Parker, we've seen a ball game on a cold, cold night in Candlestick Park, but the excitement of the game went right down to the very last out. We had a pretty good finish and some good defensive plays in the game. Thousand fans here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco tonight, and their Giants win. They are now 50 wins and 51 losses for the season. The Cardinals now are 45 wins and 55 losses, 10 games under 500. Well, the final score once again is San Francisco 6 and St. Louis 4. Tonight's game has been brought to you in part by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. A reminder again that we'll be repeating the first game of our doubleheader immediately following, so stay tuned for New York at Milwaukee coming right up. Now this is Monty Moore for West Parker saying thanks a million for joining us and so long everybody from Candlestick Park in San Francisco, California. Facilities for tonight's game provided by the Hughes Television Network. Putting more than $20 million into research this year, but that's not enough.